Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about the right way to set goals and increase your chances of success as you go into 2023, the benefits of gymnastics and wrestling for children, as well as other topics. In the second half of the show, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account, questions such as, what's the difference between good mornings and Romanian deadlifts? I'm no longer getting sore when I work out. Am I not doing enough? Will unilateral training help fix my aches and pains? And what is the best time to work out when I eat a big meal so I can take advantage of all those extra calories? All right, enjoy the show. The new year is almost here. Lots of people make goals uh, when the new year comes. So check this out. This is extremely important. The most important things to focus on when you make goals is number one, how you make those goals. And then number two, why you make those goals. If those two things are done the right way, your odds of sticking to your goals are very high. If you mess those up, forget it. You'll be like everybody else and you'll fail at over 90% of the time. All right, let's talk about first the how, and then let's talk about the why. So let's start with the how, right? Um, we always talk about making small goals, but um, I don't think people realize exactly what that means. Like, what do you mean by small goals? Like, what, is that, what does that look like? Um, so I think it's okay to have a huge goal. Like, for example, uh, losing 100 pounds is a huge <clears throat> goal, but I think it's important that when you set off towards that goal, you set really small, easy, yes. obtainable goals. Yes, that, to acquire wins. That Yes, that lead up to that versus the whole time I'm, I'm chipping away at this diet and this training, I'm thinking about the 100 pounds I need to lose uh, every single day, every single week, every single month. I think it's smarter to be like, hey, this week, I, what I know the main goal is to lose a hundred, but this week, what I'm going to do is commit to, you know, no days of eating out. I'm going to have a perfect week of just making my meals and eating the whole foods that I, and then I'm going to go for three walks. Like that's yes. my goal. Yes. The behaviors. I like stressing the behaviors and I, and, and I like to ask myself this, or I, I will train or coach people to ask themselves this. What's one change I can make now that's realistic forever. And that's where you start. So there's mm -hmm. no wrong answer. And the reason why I say forever is because here's the challenge with making New Year's resolutions is that we tend to make them in this really motivated kind of state of mind. So it's like, oh my God, that's it. Especially after holidays, right? I ate a bunch of food. I drank all this alcohol. I didn't even work out for the whole month of December, or maybe I haven't worked out for the whole year. Like that's it. New year. I'm starting all over. Let me set these goals. And then we're like, super ambitious and super motivated. And we set these goals that are unrealistic when the motivation fades away. So it's important to say, what is something I can do now that yeah. I know is realistic forever? And then that's where you start. And then Adam, you mentioned behaviors. I love that. I think that's the best. So instead of saying, you know, this month I want to lose four pounds, I'll say, okay, for this month, my goal is to see if I can only drink water and no other uh, fluids, no no sodas, no juices, just water for this month or this week. And then the next time, when that, once that becomes something that's consistent, then the next goal can be, okay, I'm going to make sure I don't eat uh, past 6 p.m. because I have a tendency to eat past 6 p.m. And when I do, it tends to be these bad foods or whatever. And I'm throwing stuff out there. Yeah. There really is no wrong answer here. But how you make those goals is so, so, so important. Now, I was considering how to answer this because in the notes, it, it said, like, start at the end. And so I didn't know how you were going to kind of, like, tie all that together. Mm. Uh, but for me, it was – I was thinking about that. Like, there's no reason to to necessarily throw out this goal that you have in terms of, like, becoming more healthy and, like, maybe trying to get – to a place where you feel like, um, like my desired outcome is that I'm going to lose some weight and my desired outcome is that I am going to get more muscular and I'm going to look better or whatever it is that's initially drawing you in, but I'm not going to put a timeline on that necessarily. Like I would, like you'd think if I'm going into a, um, like a new year resolution, like I'm going to give myself this rigid timeline. Uh, I just think that people completely overestimate what it takes to get there for one. And then also like these little goals in between to focus on that specifically is going to move you so much closer to that desired outcome uh, than to, you know, rigidly sort of put a timeline behind it and allow for uh, you to sort of move and be flexible on your way to get there. 
Yeah, well, um, uh, there's a there's a I don't know what it's called, but there's a psychological phenomenon where the further away the date is, the more lofty and uh, the 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 goal is, or the more somebody overestimates their ability. So, like, if you say someone, "Do you think you could be you can make a million dollars in 15 years?" Like, oh yeah, yeah, I could totally do that, right? But if I break that down into chunks and say, "Do you think you can make a hundred grand by the end of this month?" No way, that's good. Or do you think you could do this by today? then people tend to be more realistic. So breaking it up into small, and really these are just the steps. Like if I want to travel from point A to point B, there's steps that go along the way. Now, the second part of this is the why. This is really important. If the why is from a negative place, the odds that you'll succeed are low. Yeah. If the why is from a positive place, the odds that you'll succeed are much higher. So here's an example. What would be a negative place? I want to lose 30 pounds. Because I'm fat. Because yeah. I'm ugly. Because I'm disgusting. I'm fat, or right. Whatever, yeah. I'm not attractive, right? What would be a positive place? I want to lose 30 pounds because uh, I really want to be able to pay my kids more outside and I like to spend time with them. Or I want to lose 30 pounds because, you know what? I, I, I deserve to be healthy. Like I should definitely take care of myself, right? When it comes from a positive place, you're what you do to get there feels good versus when it's from a bad place, everything you feel, everything feels like a punishment. Like if I'm right. losing 30 pounds because I feel gross and unattractive, well then eating in a way to do so feels restrictive. Workouts feel like punishments. I'm p punishing myself because I'm unattractive. If I'm working out from a good place, like, look, I, I need to, you know, I, I think I should be taken care of. I, I deserve to be taken care of. Now workouts become self-care. Diet becomes nourishment. And this is so important for long-term success. Very, very important. The reason why people get confused is because negative emotions are very powerful short-term motivators. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely motivate the hell out of yourself for a short period of time by beating yourself up and focusing on this negative and making yourself feel like crap, but it ain't going to last forever because... Nobody wants to feel like shit forever. Right. At some point, what ends up happening is you end up telling yourself, you know what? I just want to enjoy my life. You're like, oh, I just want to enjoy life. Like, this sucks. Well, why, why does it suck so bad? Because you view it as a punishment. Because you yeah. view it as restriction. Well, it's easy to say, just reframe it, you know? But really, it takes work in that positive association each time, you know, you're going into these workouts to find something of benefit from it and to find and, and notice things uh outside of of the fact of your initial goal of weight loss or or muscle gain or whatever it is like i feel energetic i feel um like my sleep is is being affected in a positive way like there's always going to be something that you can kind of look towards and associate with uh the work as opposed to just making it always a punishment it's just a, it's it's a hard thing to keep up to just keep showing up uh when, when you're just beating yourself up about it you know it's funny justin the start at the end there's notes that i had up there like three days ago that doug put next to like <laughs> it just it threw me off bro i'm it sorry nothing to do with it has <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with it. although i was, I was like, like where's something here's, where this? I'm gonna, here's where i'm gonna save you right here that i think it's actually a reference from i believe uh rob dyrdek uh who is referencing a book called start at the end and the point of that and of bringing it up was that well, it was actually related to business and when you start a business that a lot of people, you know, oh, I want to get become a trainer or oh, I want to be this, uh, do the, start this, this business. And they don't, they don't actually think about what their end goal of what it would look like if they got everything they wanted, mm. they kind of make it up along the way, or they get to a place where they hit this hard plateau because they can't scale beyond because they didn't foresee those steps in order to lead to that end. Mm. But it's very similar to you setting this goal, like back to the exactly. hundred pounds is the end desire. Okay. I know that, but then now that I know that that's the end goal, I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to start right here, right in front of me, which is getting going, building mm -hmm. the business and set small goals, but knowing that that's where I'm heading. Right. So, and a lot of people don't start their business that way. So that's why the note was in there to and, do that, but it does align with kind of the conversation. I mean, it's, it's funny to me because a lot of people feel and think this way. And in fact, I've had people, ask me this time and time again. Well, they'll say, okay, once I get in shape, once I lose weight, uh, then what happens if I stop? Have you guys heard that before from yeah. people? Uh -huh. Which Now, I, the, the answer seems obvious, but I know why they're asking me because they're like, this sucks so bad. That I want it to end at some point. When I'm done, what's going to happen? Right. So you have to start this 
and do this in a positive way, in a way that you can not just tolerate, but something that you enjoy. Otherwise, you are 100% screwed. <laughs> You're going to 100% fail. So let me paint the picture again. If you go, imagine right now, if you're listening to this or watching this, right? Imagine right now you're going to the gym because you feel disgusted about your body. What does your workout look like? What does it feel like? What kind of intensity are you going to apply? Now stretch that out over the next month, two months, year, three years, five years, forever. Okay. Now let's paint a different scenario. You go to the gym and you're like, oh man, I need to, I, I want to take care of myself. Like I need, I want to, I want to take care of myself right now. What does the workout look like? What does the intensity look like? Now stretch that out. Which one of those is a is a great experience? Which one of those feels like punishment? Which one of those feels like this is a treat and this is something I get to do, not something I have to do? Which one is sustainable? Okay, mm -hmm. so how you make your goals and why you make your goals is so important. And do not make this cardinal mistake. This is the, the, the biggest mistake people make is they say, I'll figure it out after I get there. Oh, once I lose the 30 pounds, then I'll figure it out. No, you'll gain it back. 100% of the time. The man See? who loves walking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you beat me to Goes it. Bro. further. <laughs> we'll it's the further. journeyman. <laughs> hey, why are you sporting? Dude? Yeah, I am, dude. Did you, is that, I'm proud of is you, bro. Is that about me? I'm so proud of you. That's so great. Yeah, you like that? Are, 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 do we sell those? We do. We do now. Really? Yeah, we do. We have this one and we have your, your South 316. It's a 316. proverb, really, at this point. That's why it's South 316 yeah. oh, is the okay. other shirt. Yeah, so we have, I mean, I would have picked a proverb. I have a shirt. Okay, 316. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We That's got so, it both. I know. Pretty and cool. you're wearing it. I am rocking it. You, I'm yeah. proud of you, bro. That's so nice. Yeah, I'm super proud of you. Super viral. Dude, you're up there with Kobe. Oh my God. And uh, I mean, some of the greats. You know how annoyed my kids are, by the way? <laughs> because they're friends, because they're obviously they're young, right? So 17 and 13, my older kids. Yeah. And uh, that demographic, we don't have a ton of people in that age demographic that listen yeah. to us. Mark Cuban. But that song. age demographic loves TikTok. Mm -hmm. So now my kids have their friends constantly bringing them like TikTok clips where people There's post all dad. kinds of stuff with, with that <clears throat> quote. Yeah. And they're like, oh. Even, my daughter rolls her eyes yeah. every time. Oh, my dad's going. My favorite was the one that I sent you guys where it, the tile guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like a guy doing tile, like ironing shirts or whatever. He's just like, this has gone too far. Like you're just doing mundane things. Yeah. <laughs> Stop <laughs> making it. It's got sales <laughs> audio in the back about this motivational. What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode: the Super <laughs> Bundle. This is the biggest bundle of programs that we offer. It's like a year and a half of exercise programming, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Performance, and a lot of other programs. I think Prime is in there, Anywhere's in there. There's a lot of programs. You can win it for free, okay? But here's how you have to enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, then subscribe to this channel, then turn on notifications, do all those things. If we pick you as the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section, and then boom, you got the super bundle. Also, for everybody else, we have a sale this month that is ending in three days. So three days from now, the sale is over. Here's what's going on in the sale. We have an at-home holiday bundle, which includes our best at-home workout programs, meaning you don't need a lot of workout equipment for these following workout programs. MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Suspension, MAPS Prime, and the No BS six-pack formula. All of these together would retail you for $330. But right now, in this bundle, it's only $99.00. And 99 cents. Again, there's only three days left for the sale. So if you're interested or you want to learn more, all you got to do is click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. Hey, speaking of kids, um, I saw your video you posted up this last week. Your your boys, dude. Have you seen? Oh these yeah, boys? Yeah, oh, I didn't yeah, see yeah. it yet. You were telling me about. Yeah, you got to you, right you got to pull it up or send have to send it to Doug so he yeah. can show the, show these guys. Yeah, like, man. So they're they're just, like like serious backflipping and stuff. Oh, dude. Now. I mean, it's an everyday thing. Like at this point, uh, they, they alternate throughout the week. So oh wow, I'm watching one right now. Getting really competitive with this gymnastics and uh, their skills are are really starting to kind of bro. That's no joke. Take him places so that is no joke yeah like ever at, at one point he could only do like one back handspring and then i swear it almost it felt like overnight for me because obviously i'm not at every practice and like right. watching him wow. kind of develop this but i mean he can go like and it stopped and i i, I put that there because like it, his gym's a little small to host these competitions and the ones that they normally do like huge like in vegas and you know these other 
um, big, huge gyms that uh, he could he could do so many of them now in a row. Like it just tripped me out. So it's it's fun, man. It's fun to see how far they've already progressed at their levels. And Everett just skipped up like two levels really? higher. Yeah, just recently. So, so how to, to explain how that works? You're saying levels, like obviously in like you know judo there's, or in jiu jitsu, there's belts and stuff. So yeah, yeah like specific the, moves you have to be able to mm -hmm. do. To move up there, so they have to acknowledge whatever level they are before they actually go to compete and and it's different moves like that are more difficult and so they kind of rate those moves and then routines that they kind of build upon so for instance with the trampoline there's like a couple of these kind of front back flips and then like brawnies you kind of flip sideways and then there's this one where it's like a ball up where he he goes down and kind of this is the one that Everett just you know, skip the level because he he's able to do it now where he, he has to basically like flip down on his back and then bounce up off the trampoline on his back and then flip out of it oh, wow. uh, and then keep going. And, and so it's just like the level of difficulty increases substantially and I'll have to post, I have another video I didn't post of uh, one of the kids that's like mentors, all of them who just recently went to somewhere um, uh, like this, this Eastern Bloc country, I forget, but, uh, competed and for the, for team USA and got wow. a bronze. Oh, wow. And he's sick, dude. Like he could go, he jumps when he just he gets started jumping, uh, to get momentum. He touches the ceiling and it's like, it's, I mean, dude, can I just, can I just, it say, freaks me out how high he goes. Now co wow. coaches and fitness experts know this, but it, I think this is still, I don't know, somewhat of a, of a secret. Um, that gymnastics has got to be for kids one of the best to, to get your kids to develop um, just body awareness and kinesthetic ability. Mm -hmm. It's got to be one of the best. Like what I mean by that is it, the, the, if they learn skills in gymnastics – at, at a young age, that'll translate into uh, improved sports performance because, across the board. That's, yeah. yeah, because body control is is the foundation to every sport. Yep. I don't yeah. care what you play, yeah. that having good body control translates to everything. On, yeah. on the field, in the water, on the ice. By the way, it did you know matter. there was a study? You can always build on that. I got yeah. to find it. There was a study they just published that showed, uh, and this is important when you're a kid, that uh, young kids who played multiple sports, and we've talked about this before. I forgot who we had the podcast. Chad, I forget his last name. Yeah. Ki young kids that play multiple sports versus kids that just specialize in one sport. When they get older and then they play the same sport. So let's say this kid over here or these kids over here only specialize in football. Since they're mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to play football. And this kid over here, these kids over here do football, baseball, gymnastics, taekwondo. Okay. Yeah. Then when they get older, let's say they're all focused on football now. The kids that did all the sports when they were younger do better at the football than the one who just focused on football. Because their ability to adapt to different variables is way higher than the ones that yes. are specialized. And, yeah. it's, and it's because of the age. When you're mm -hmm. young, your you're neuro malleable. Yeah, yeah, your neuroplasticity of, of the brain is so crazy that at that point, developing general skills has crazy payback. That's actually one of the episodes yeah. I refer out more than any, almost any other really? episode. Yeah, yeah. Anytime I have somebody that has a kid that's in sports, I almost always think, because if you, I don't know if you recall, but he actually broke it down from like, the GPP. Your, your mm -hmm. first, yeah, mm -hmm. your first year of, of playing any sport all the way into college on the ideal amount of rotation mm -hmm. of other sports. I don't know if you remember that or not, but it was like, he was saying, and I want to say it's like, like I the perfect world, like four different sports a year mm -hmm. leading all the way up to like high school. And then high school, you go you down like to two, two I think. and then yeah, two and then not till condense. college. Do you specialize to one? Exactly. So. Yeah. That's kind of the planet. And two, I talked about this a bit, like Mike Salemi started a podcast. He interviewed you guys. I finally yeah. got to interview with him, did a great job. Uh, but we talked a lot about this. Uh, I forgot. I'm like, of course. Like, he grew up doing gymnastics first. In, Salemi? Yeah. Oh, God. And, of course, you know, and it's like examples. I think like even our other example. Guy. That guy makes no sense. Um, like, now it makes sense a little bit. It, right? <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. So, that, that kind of put it in perspective for me. I'm like, oh, man. It, it's a little bit of like, um, like, I wish I would have. Uh, grew up uh, starting there as that base for me. 100%. And it, originally, I'm like, you know, like just because I'm unfamiliar with it as much was kind of like jabbing at it and this and that. But I'm so I'm so glad that. What uh, were all the sports you played growing up as a kid? Uh, where you actually 
played that? Obviously, you played football. I played you say soccer? soccer. I played uh, basketball. I played baseball. And then it wasn't until um, uh, high school that I, my freshman year, I played football. And then I did football, uh, basketball, baseball. And then I did uh, rugby. And okay. then and then I played college football. And then I played uh, college football, rugby, and then just college football. And then, Adam, you were soccer a lot. Soccer for seven years and then basketball when I got into junior high. So basketball was junior high through high school. Um, then I played organized. Um, I mean, I played every sport growing up. Probably like, like with Justin. Your and yeah, stuff. yeah. I mean, I think we, I think we damn near did everything. Uh, as like, I, I played lots of baseball and pickup yeah. baseball and stuff yeah. like that. But roller never hockey. Organized. Yeah, I did. That yeah, too, I did. I did, I did. Yeah, 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 of dude. course. Yeah, we did. Even ice because I lived in Colorado for a while, so we did ice hockey. Dude, roller blades were the thing uh, back in the day. They were. They were. They were huge. But I, yeah, soccer was the only thing organized, and basketball was the only thing organized that I, that I played. And I wish I would have. I wish I would have done a lot more. I only did uh, martial arts organized. I played with my friends, but I only I did judo as a kid, and then Brazilian jiu jitsu, and then I lifted weights at fourteen. But That's I played great. almost. That's nothing. next. I want. I really want to, my kids to do. Jiu-jitsu. I mean, wait, wait. Just wait till because um, I know the boys are also skiing and stuff like that. The way gymnastics. I really wish I would have done gymnastics because how much I got into snowboarding and wakeboarding. Mm-hmm. I loved snowboarding and wakeboarding through all through high school to adulthood and if that you want to talk about body control yeah. and stuff like that imagine like, if you did those jumps and you had that familiarity that's of the hardest that's the hardest like that. part about like once you get to a level of like mm-hmm. r- both snowboarding and wakeboarding where you have really good control riding uh the tricks is mm-hmm. having that that spatial awareness when you're flipping in the air and mm-hmm. spinning and mm-hmm. like Man, that the learning curve on that of just like falling and crashing over and over because you don't you're not comfortable spinning or going upside down and then coming down. It's like it's so hard. You you you. It's crazy the little things that you do that his kids are already figuring out of like not closing your eyes and seeing the ground and staying straight and control. Like mm-hmm. I didn't have that foundation, so I'm like crashing, crashing, yeah. crashing, learning, <laughs> learning the hard way. You know, trying all those tricks. You know what else kids. is a super super valuable too for kids? Have you guys ever watched uh, like kids that wrestle? Like yeah. at a really young age, yep. and they grow up wrestling. That's great for they're, them. Oh my god, the way that they move their bodies and their just their agility and flexibility. Well, when to you know really throttle down, when to kind of relax your way through things. Like it's it teaches you so much more than you realize. Yes. And at a young age, before boys and girls, before the size difference makes a difference, when they're young. I mean, the boys and girls wrestle each other because you know at some at up to a certain point, boys and girls are kind of the same size, yeah. or whatever. And it's really cool to see these little girls, like you know, beating the crap out of these boys or whatever. Yeah, out wrestling them and stuff. It's really really cool. Yeah, they're usually a little more mature, you know. So yeah. they got like smarter moves and oh, stuff. Man. And then you know, kind of. We'll see. I'm working on my two youngest. Plays now. out. Now the two youngest. Let's see if you guys like <laughs> some of the stuff. I would love to see that. Hey, yeah. one of the, one of the uh, partners we have to mention today is uh, Creatures of Habit. Did you uh, see that they do a subscription? I think they're doing the subscription specifically for our audience. Is that correct, Doug? Well, that's convenient. I'm not sure. Uh, But we do have a page here, and I'm going to cast it up here. They have uh, a number of different uh, subscriptions, but one of them you can save 44% if you subscribe. And what, it's like every 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, something like that? Um, Yeah, so it's 28 meals. So the one that you save 44% on is 28 meals. And that uh, comes out probably once a month. It's it's the most uh, it's the supplement that I use. Like if it, like if I put this in the category like protein powder, I guess you could kind of loosely put it in that category. I use this more frequently than anything mm-hmm. because it's, it's a, a com- real meal. It's a complete meal. Yeah, yeah. You know because it's so it, convenient, man. Yeah, I add water and I got thirty grams of protein. What is it? 30, 40 grams of carbs, uh, nine grams of fat, something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's basically a meal. Like you're you're all set. I'm bringing all kinds of packets with me over to uh, Europe because <laughs> I don't know, right? You never know. I forgot. Yeah. So tell us. Like, so you're going to Scotland, Scotland, and then Iceland. So yeah, we're spending Christmas, New Year's. So I get Scotland because you have, uh, I guess, lineage and uh, there. Right? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. No, Iceland. Why Iceland? Yeah. So I wanted to take because we loved Scotland. Me, Courtney and I went for our anniversary a couple years back. And uh, it's just like a magical place. And is this the whole family, boys too? Yes, yeah, so the okay. boys are coming, and then uh, her sister's actually there now. We're going to meet with her and her friends for a bit. But the Iceland thing came about because uh, the second half of it, we're like, okay, we go through and we see all the main sites and all that. Um, you know, like we were thinking of going to another country, maybe Ireland or doing that 
but Iceland, I just thought, I, I, I don't know. It was on this, we looked it up and it saved four hours of us coming home. If we, you know, basically stop there, spend some time and then, you know, depart from there. And I was like, I've always wanted to go there personally. I've just seen so many cool pictures and like, I've just, everybody I've talked to that's been is so like, I know two, this is crazy place. Landscape photographers that say Iceland is their favorite place ever. Just yeah. from, a la- from a landscape I've heard that from, 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 for visually, like it's just the beautiful, just supposed to be absolutely beautiful. What trips and me out is the fact I, that I know two that are photographers. That's what they do is travel and take you know pictures of yeah. landscape like and say epic. that that was that iceland is one of their favorite places and they have a long uh lineage of strength sports right yeah like yeah, they strong got strong men, men competitors from power there. lifters mm-hmm. uh viking doug, blood doug maybe you can look this up i know this i know this for norway is it norway or the netherlands um i looked this up a long time ago i had a trainer that worked for me this young lady Years ago, and she was from I want to say the Netherlands, and she you know blonde, she you know typical whatever from from that place, and we were talking about like what it's like over there, and she's like, oh, you would totally stand out, and I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, because you're you're darker complected, whatever, and I said, uh, you know, are they all like big? Like I, I feel like every time I meet someone, they're all, and she goes, oh yeah, everybody's super tall. So I looked it up. And maybe I'm wrong, but maybe you can look this up. The average height, I think, in the Nether- Netherlands for a male was like six two, or yeah. six foot. Like average. I mean, is I've that, heard is all that where huge. like some of the tallest women are too? Aren't they? Isn't it like women? I think are like the average five, eight, woman five, was five nine or yeah, five yeah, ten. I, think it's high. I don't know, Doug. Look up average yeah, height so. in Netherlands and then average height in Iceland. I'd, I'd be interested to see. Like that's wild. Yeah. How I, big? How tall they are? What yeah, I'm getting say? a 182.9 centimeters. So let me do a, me do <laughs> a little calculated uh, little, yeah. we'll conversion on it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're doing. We don't all, use the metric scale yeah. here unless it's uh, drugs, right? Yeah. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> Americans don't it's like six that. foot. So that's for, the, for oh, a man. Okay. Yeah, six well, foot. And where is that? Above average. Uh, that's I believe in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, so Netherlands. The, so just to give people an example, the average height in the U.S. for a man is five nine. No, it's five ten. Is it five ten or five nine? Pretty sure it's five. I think it's five nine. We'll and then for a woman, it's five foot, almost six inches. Okay. Um, okay. Doug, look up average height for a man in America. I'm pretty sure it's five nine. Nonetheless, that's a big difference. Yeah. yeah when you're yeah. looking at average, yeah. uh, how tall people? Oh, that's what it was. It was my 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 brother in law. Uh, he was making a big deal about it because he went to the Netherlands and he's like, "Bro, I felt like five nine. Uh, yeah. Five nine. Wow. He was just dwarfed by everybody. Yeah, that's another one. Write that down, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just write that one down, buddy. Hey, what if I looked it up before yeah. we did the podcast? I'm gonna bring this up. I think like Adam. 20 years it was five ten. Dude, <laughs> it's a little Dude. sketch though, because it's a winner. You know, I, I was like, I don't know, oh, this could right. go like good or it could go terrible, right? There's like Gale Force Windsor right now, so you know, hopefully What's Gale get, Force. What's that mean? Like super, super strong. strong. Like, like I don't know what the actual, blow you over. Where, does, where no did that come that from? Gale Force. G A I L. Oh, G A L E, I believe. Oh, G A L E. Another one. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so the mark that down, Doug. Yeah, you didn't know it was. You didn't ask me. So Gale is to refer to winds of tropical force for coastal areas between thirty. What's the origin of it, though? Not what of is the it? name? Yeah, like where? Why would, oh, it was like why would you call it Gale? You, you didn't know about it. Comes from the old Norse word Galen, which means mad, frantic, or bewitched. Okay, there we go. There that's, you that's, go. That's what I was Gale. looking for. Ooh. Next yeah. time, you, next time your girl's mad at you, like yeah, you, know, you seem a little hey, Galen right now. Gale. What does that mean? Don't Gale force. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't that's like a lot of wind. I'm not. I'm not a fan of. Well, I, I yeah. I, at least I have some bit of experience. Like when I was in Chicago, that was why it was so cold, dude. Because you get this this wind coming off of Canada and it comes down off the lake, and then, dude, we'd have like 30 below wind chill that that would made it so cold. 30 yeah, that, below? That's crazy. Yeah, it was insane. I, I mean, I think it's. A, I think it's really weird how different like a. Minus three in Colorado will feel like compared to like a 35 degree San Francisco night, windy night. Yeah. Mm. Like the 35 degree San Francisco windy night is cold as shit. I remember walking down to school in a t-shirt at minus three in Colorado. Hmm. Just if if the sun was out. Because there's no wind. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and it's like, and yeah, it's a different wind, cold. It's like a dry. It this worse. dry cold is different than the the wet cold off of the water. Mm -hmm. It feels dramatically. Oh, yeah. it, I like, dram like humid heat versus dry heat. Yes. Yeah. So the same thing goes for the cold. The dry cold does not feel as cold yeah. as like a wet breezy. So like, you have off to the actually ocean. get a down jacket. Like you have to get something with like feathers and all that to deal with it. And uh, like because they said like it's not like the wind just blows at one angle. So it, it's from like all sides. It like comes down in and penetrates you like through your neck and like well, isn't she, the isn't shit Chicago? Out of you. Is it Chicago or is it Michigan? Where those famous photos of cars? Yeah, where those frozen over the, and, the, and the water it's like frozen yes. sideways. You yeah. ever seen that before? The like yeah. icicles are like going literally to this. like Mr. Frost just went like <laughs> yeah, it, like those are I've seen photos of that. And I'm like that would be so wild to walk out and see. Have you seen that, Doug? Before I have. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah it, that's crazy. Yeah, that so was. the kids in court and you have no idea what's coming their way. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm blow praying your kids for them. Away. You have yeah. to hold their hands. How, I mean, yeah. How do you pack on a trip like that? You got to take serious. Load. Like, yeah, you got to take like big down jackets and and ski pants. You have to have like long johns and like everything. Like, so the thing is, the contrast is like Scotland is is more rainy, kind of snowy, mm -hmm. but it's just wet and cold. And then you go from that to more of like wind and like like snow so is that acceptable attire is that what because i feel like that's what it would be just bring your your snow gear that you would wear snowboarding yeah and that's just not wear like enough. undergarments underneath it and then and then wear that every day i mean basically in iceland yeah that's that's kind of the move would that like you would people would do that is that something that they people, said it's pretty like most people will wear just like kind of snow look at those pants. americans over there right yeah. i know right <laughs> you, you look like you're all <laughs> <laughs> they're in like jeans. Oh, what if his down jacket's a big American flag? <laughs> you know, it's funny about that. Yeah. So, uh, so we did kind of Christmas early. And so, uh, the boys got like beanies and, and of course, like they got them all like Santa Cruz, like skate, surf, uh, look at stuff. So he's got like bright orange, you know, with like, I'm like, oh yeah, you guys are really going to blend in, you know, in a foreign country. <laughs> 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 Who's the tourists? Yeah, what's that'll be the, us. What's the language they speak in Iceland? Does anybody know? Is it Icelandic? I have no is that, idea. Is that it? I think, I think it's that's a, what it is. I'm guessing. It's a, uh, so. yeah. I heard that language. it's the hardest language to learn. Hmm. Really? Wasn't it like Bjork? Uh, she's Icelandic. I think she's and from she's, there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's considered is, is that the hardest. It's the hardest language. You know why? I, know I thought that? English is supposed to be the hardest. No, English is not the hardest. Dude, no. okay, so Iceland is hilarious. If you just try and read off all the different cities and like towns there, uh, it's all uh, like consonants, like n no vowels at all. It's just all like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how to like. <laughs> It's impossible to like pronounce, dude. It's hey, really bad. Hey, so you want to know why I know this? This is some ran a random memory. There was this this guy that had this strange memory, and I don't know what his deal was, but he was weird. But he had this. It was on. A, it was on a show, and he could learn languages in a very short period of time. And so the the TV host challenged him to learn Iceland uh, Icelandic in I think it was like two days, and then he got on the show and he spoke it. Because that's apparently the hardest language. Two days. What does that so say? So it's a category four language in terms of difficulty, which is harder than French, but easier than learning Chinese. Oh, so, so it's Chinese is one of the hardest ones. Mm. I tell you guys that J Jessica tried to take Chinese lessons. So, hey, let's see a ranking. Yeah, of that. I'm just, just curious, like, what, what are considered? Like, just see if you can find happened? the whole ranking, Doug. That's a crazy uh, attempt. Do you want to know what the most obscure language is? Well, I just want to see what the ones are hardest to, to learn. Mm -hmm. I, I think English is up there, actually, because of... Well, like I, clicking noises or... We have so much slang in our language that I think that it makes it is why it makes one of the more difficult ones for people to learn, I believe. So the Category 5 languages... Is the hardest? Are, are the hardest. Arabic, Cantonese, mm -hmm. Mandarin, both Chinese, right? Uh, Japanese and Korean. Wow. Really? Dogs. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm winning. Wow, yeah. such a badass. You know, so oh, you're so much you know, smarter than us. Did you know that there's a language that exists? It's the least spoken spoken language in the world, I think. That's a language of whistling. Uh, you yes, knew that, didn't I do you? knew that, yeah. Justin knew that. Yeah. People whistle yeah. to each other. They whistle to each other. As to talk? That's the language. Uh -huh. No Be way. Yes, really? it is. Yes, because... Apparently it's a it's like a mountainous region. Yeah, and that was the way to project. Yeah, and they'll say they'll, they'll wee, 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 and yeah. the guy way over there, wee, 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 and that's how they that's how they talk to each other yeah. with whistles. <laughs> I want to see this. Well, the whole so, yodeling <laughs> thing was all part of that too, right? No, it's called Silbo lighting. Gomera. It has between two and four vowels, between four and ten consonants. The language is whistled form of a dialect of Canarian Spanish. What? Whoa. Yeah. So what? Uh, yeah. So yeah. So it replaces each vowel or consonant with a whistling sound. 
So when I was, so you know what's I interesting? I want to see that. Oh, it's, that's wild. It sounds funny. It's a trip. <laughs> So there. Oh yeah, see, that's I, I. There was like a documentary or something. We must have both seen it, Justin. Yeah, at yeah. At the same time, probably. Yeah, they have to use their. They, they do the kind of whistling where you can really make a, a loud, high pitched noise. Never been able to do that. Yeah, never been. <laughs> so I, I know. My dad does that where you roll your tongue. Yeah, yeah. and you have to use yeah. your hands to like. Yeah, my stepdad. I can't really do it, dude. So I, I know, I know how to speak. Well, Sicilian is a dialect, but that's a dying language. Like people don't speak it anymore. Mm. Oh, really? So, no, it's a, it, it, when Italy unified or whatever. Um, the official dialect was uh, the Roman dialect, which is what's con I think Rome, which is considered the official. That's now official Italian, and you all public schools, everything could only teach in in what is now considered Italian. But Italy had lots of dialects, like tons of, re every region had its own dialect. And um, very, very few people speak it. So when I go- Now, how I, far off are they from there? Oh, bro. Um, Sicilian, the, and by the way, there's Sicilian, but then there's different flavors of the dialect in Sicily. Sure. Catanese. Subset dialects. Yeah, Palermitano. Which sure, which is not, not much different than you saying in the U.S., listen to someone who talks from no, New Alabama. York or the South. Or no. It's not just an accent. No, it's way thing. more than that. Okay. Oh. It's not just how you pronounce words. It's also words that don't exist in other dialects, like completely different words. Hmm. So you have calabresi. You, 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 don't, you don't think that's the same when the way we no. add, like Southern people add certain slang terms? No, and, so accent is different than dialect. Like yeah, right. I'm, I'm accent, and then they add words. There's a few. Yeah, there a few, is. There's a few different words, not, but it, you can understand them for the most part. It's right? not considered a dialect. So it's not like that at all. It's not, not like, like that at all. I mean, there's like isolated pockets of different languages essentially yeah yeah and wow. i know you know this because in uh and i mean living in japan living in, in, in china they also have dialects. right are, yeah. absolutely and yeah. in fact i think japan has not been that long they've had a standardized uh, the, yeah. language yep. it was again because it's mountainous mm -hmm. area and people lived in people didn't travel they didn't travel, they didn't travel. have no. you ever heard the uh, joe coy stand up where he does yeah. the dialects really yeah. good oh he does those yeah. so he does a little skit where he does well like if you if korean you, japanese chinese vietnamese it's hilarious oh it's so good but yeah if you listen to like sicilian yeah. dialect versus uh milanese which is like a dialect from milan they sound like completely different languages totally different wow okay and, so back to my original question so then when can Sicilian people understand someone who's speaking in regular Italian or you would Well, no, understand? everybody speaks, everybody speaks now a standardized Italian. No, but I mean like, okay, would you, can you understand Italian? So, Standard. so I grew up as a kid speaking Sicilian. Right. And I can understand Italian, but not, not nearly as well as I can understand Sicilian. And so it's, it's kind of hard for me. I can't really speak Italian back. Okay. Well explain like, how hard is it for you? Like you really, like you don't pick up every word even? I can't watch Italian TV and understand everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, not at all. Okay, so like you can pick out certain words and yeah. maybe piece hmm. together what they're trying to ask. Like if I was yeah. asking you repeating the same thing over, you'd probably be able to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I was -da 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 -da, going no, back and forth, no, you, would get, you would get lost in the nah, conversation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's but wild. It's that different. It's very different. In fact, when I went to Sicily as a kid and I spoke Sicilian, uh, the kids made fun of me and said, oh, you talk like my grandmother. Like, what are you, you know, oh, what are you saying? That's what, you know, because no, the kids didn't speak it. They all spoke yeah, yeah. Italian. So, and even now when my aunts and uncles, when I speak to them, they'll go back to Sicilian because they know that that's, you know, kind of what I understand and I don't understand, but it's a dying language. They're trying to revive it, but I mean, nobody yeah. really speaks it anymore. Unless uh, you're like buying like produce and stuff like that in the streets. I, I think they still will speak. Some well, of I just watched something uh, the other day. I was thought of you, Adam, because of your um, your burn recently on your hand. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Almost so better. that was all like steam driven, right? Yeah, yeah. Bad. So, dude, there was this uh, this documentary was is White Island, I believe. It was this island off of uh, uh, New Zealand or Australia. I think it's New Zealand, and um, it uh, it was documenting kind of like that other one we brought up with the 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 um, earthquake that happened in the Himalayas. Oh yeah, it was just like that. So they kind of recreated um, and pieced together a lot of different footage that people had taken of this volcano that erupted uh, spontaneously. They didn't know like it was going to happen, and they had tours kind of going on to this island, and there was people. Uh, traversing their way to get to this crater and and take pictures and all that, but it was steaming excessively, and they were just like, "Wow, this is more than normal." And turns out, like it it fully like exploded, and then there was like two different tour groups that were like massively affected by this, 
and um, it it wasn't like it was a different type of an eruption. So it actually like uh, I guess because of the bottom, I don't know like how to explain this, but it was basically like more black smoke came up, which then superheated um, this lake that was right above it. And it just like created this crazy steam that like blasted through oh, and gave these people the worst burns like, like melted them. humanly possible. Oh. And it was awful because they're describing like, you know, how like these people were trying to help them out and they were just like kind of trying to grip them. And it was like skin was just coming off as they're oh. grabbing their arm. And, oh. and like they, they didn't show any of it because it was so horrific, like how they're describing the whole thing. Uh, but I was like, oh my God. And these poor people that like went on, it was like their honeymoon just got married. And how like, many people was it? Was it a lot of people? So yeah. Well, so it turns out, I think there was like, I think it was like somewhere around 16 something people got, um, rescued. Yeah. And then there was like 22 didn't make it. Um, and so they, it, cause it was too dangerous for like rescue crews to get there in time because of the you know, all the smoke and all the debris. And that's crazy. So wow. it was just, it was super sad, but it was like, man, like nature does not fucking care. No. Yeah. You know, it's no. just crazy. Like we forget that all the time. That, oh, like, wow. Crazy stuff can happen. Oh, wow. Look at that. Volcano burn survivor removes their face mask for the first time. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. But I didn't, I didn't realize that like there's different types of did you, eruptions like that. Did you know, you know, in movies when there's like, um, like volcanic magma, right. Or molten metal or whatever. And then like someone jumps in, they always like sink in and catch on fire. You know, that wouldn't happen, right? How would it happen? You would literally just melt? sit on top of it and it would burn the shit out of you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would keep you up on the top. Yeah, you ain't going to sink inside. Uh, You'll go on top of it and then it just- Because oh, it's you, really thick and dense. Yes. Uh, Is it really that dense? You wouldn't yeah. sink at all. Yeah, trust me. I looked it up. I was like, what would happen if- It's <laughs> <laughs> a random search. I like, oh, you want to hear random? I love when you when you debunk those stuff like that, right? When you, like, you've like you seen something on a movie. like it's, Remember the gasoline one? How many, how, like, how many oh, decades yeah. has people- Mythbusters crushed. That yeah. I know. Yeah, like, all you need to do is shoot it and it explodes. No, the, the uh, if you throw a if you throw a cigarette in gasoline, yeah. it, it just it, light. it doesn't light it. No. It puts it out. No, yeah. here's the liquid puts it out. My daughter, I got to talk about random. My daughter sent me uh, a bunch of dad rules. She said, like, oh, these are these are dad rules. I'm going to read you four of them. It says, when <laughs> don't you be breathe that way. They're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no. These are hilarious. When you become a father, all your sneezes must be loud and violent. And then there's another one that says. It's a picture of, of a hand holding like a grilling tongs. Yeah. And it says, some tools require testing before use. Examples include <laughs> click, click tongs, squeeze the trigger of a power drill a couple times, and spin the socket of a ratchet wrench. Huh. <laughs> Why is it that you could like 100%. literally- 100%. I can feel myself- I have doing. never <laughs> used grilling tongs and not click, click them ever before. I yeah. <laughs> it's like part of the gig. And then here's another one. This one cracked me up. You must let out a sigh of satisfaction when sitting down on the lawn chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. And then here's another one. Yeah. There's like bags of like soil stacked up on top yeah. of each other. So yeah. one shall slap the bag of soil at the garden center when passing by. <laughs> yeah. What is that? That's all true. hundred percent. That's all hella true. Yeah. This is so random, but so good. I know. She sent them to me. And it's like, it makes you so proud that she's, uh, like, you know, that she's like, I love my, my sense of humor. Dude. Anyway. That's so great. Justin, I want to hear about, um, you you had some notes on bolt cutters in Santa Cruz. Oh, you, yeah. said, so, you want to tell some story or something? Yeah. So this was news uh, that was local news. So, I mean, from our, our international audience, they could give a shit. But <laughs> um, it was it was interesting because it was a 24-hour fitness, and we all kind of went through 24-hour for our fitness. And, you know, I just was curious to get your guys' reaction on this as well. Like, what the hell? So I guess there was a, a member there that, like, exclaimed that they – had been locked out of their locker. Yeah. And so they're just like, oh, I can't get in my locker. And so they proceeded to, oh, okay, no problem. And they gave this person the bolt cutters. <laughs> they went in there. They gave them the own bolt cutters. They, their own. No, unsupervised, wow. literally cut everybody's bulk and stole from like uh, 30 different people. Wow. And took off. So I remember, okay, I remember when 24 Hour Fitness implemented the rule that you had to get an ID from the person and go in there and yeah. cut the, both. So you both took their ID, you had to photocopy their ID that you were both, so you had documentation that this person did that. Yep. Yeah. That way, because let's be honest, even if you have their ID and they cut, 
you, how do you prove that that's theirs? Yeah. So you had their information in case someone later goes, hey, someone cut my lock. Yeah. Like I have their, their stuff. So I was there before that was a rule. And then afterwards when it became a rule. So that's kind of crazy that that someone got away with that because that's a stupid employee. Yeah. yeah that's, it's seriously that's must a, be that's like a, a lazy employee. Idiot. That lazy. Like, oh yeah. No problem. Yeah, that's a lazy kid who just said, F it. I'm not going to do my job. Yeah, here, take it. What a moron. So what I used to do whenever wow. that would happen to me is when somebody would say, Hey, I, I, I can't open my lock. I don't know what's going on is we'd walk over to the locker. I'd have the bolt cutters and I'd say, tell me everything that's in here. Oh yeah, and then they'd have to tell me, describe yeah, it all, yeah. Yeah. and then I'd cut it and then open it. And if it didn't match, obviously it's not yours. I think that's an easy way to. Wow, do it. somebody totally. got like everybody's stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, pure pure hustle. You know yeah. what also was a big hustle was the the purse nabbing. Mm. I remember people would break people. They'd there were people that sit in the parking lot on weekday nights. Oh yeah, around went six seven o'clock at night around this time of year, yep. and they would wait until someone walked in and watch ladies either put it in their trunk. Yep. Or somewhere in their car, and they come mm. over and either break the, break the window and take it out the front seat, or pop the trunk and and take and go. That was like a, a regular yeah, occurrence. Yeah, parking lot. There was always breaking. Cars getting broken into in gyms. Is, uh, parking lots is super common because people think it's safer to leave their wallets and stuff in their cars. Yeah, then it's, uh, so that's the actually irony. a prime target. In fact, gyms now, almost every gym now, there's a sign in the parking lot that says, "We are not responsible for." Whatever your valuables, whatever. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh man, I you know I don't know if you guys ever just you guys do you guys ever like fantasize about catching someone do some shit like that? You ever think in your head like what would I do? <laughs> well, I have when, when so something's happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. When something's happened to me like that, I've always fantasized about catching them. Right, like I've yeah. had my car keyed, I've had two cars stolen, I've had like things like like damage done mm. to my stuff where I'm just like, man, let me catch a motherfucker, yeah. let me catch somebody in the, doing that. You know what I'm saying? Or catch somebody doing it to somebody else's stuff and you know catch them red handed. Like I would. Did just, I ever tell you when I caught the kid oh. uh, egging our house when I was when I was younger? Oh yeah, I was like seventeen. Oh, I'd be less harsh about that. So. I was like seventeen. <laughs> well, I was you know seventeen, so yeah. I'm all full of piss and vinegar. And yeah. It's my house, yeah. right? So, and I just so happened, it was like perfect timing. I just so happened to open the front door as the kid threw the egg, hit the garage, and he jumped on his bike. I had my I had a basketball in my hand because I was about to go play basketball at the school down the street. I ran after him. I threw the ball because he took him a second to take off. He fell off his bike. I grabbed his bike and I said, your bike is mine now. You can have your dad come pick it up. And he never came back. He was oh, he, too scared to come back. Oh, wow. Yeah. I said, you tell your dad to come pick up your bike and I'll tell him what you did. Oh, wow. And then he never, he never came back. <laughs> That's a great know. move. Isn't that great? Frightened him. You little I thief. Yeah. I, I think I told this <laughs> I, I ended up yeah. becoming the thief. <laughs> Dude, yeah. He's lucky my dad didn't find him. Yeah, yeah. Another time we had some kid throw a rock. Uh, at our window. Yeah, that's not okay. And my dad, I never forget, for like a week, slept in the living room. And I'm like, please. I remember as a kid, I was like <laughs> praying. I was like, please don't let some kid do this shit while kid. my dad's in the living room. Oh, man, he'll kill them. My dad's going yeah, to kill yeah. somebody. That's not going to be good. Yeah, I was, uh, um, uh, when I was at um, uh, San Jose State, and it was really competitive to get parking at this parking structure, I was fighting over this one spot with this guy and I was there first and my, I was like just inched in front of him and the guy like lurched his car towards it and I lurched and like barely got in right before him. And then I'm like, Hey man, I was here. And like, we got into this whole thing. Like, ah, fuck you. Bro. And then he drives off and I'm kind of slowly walking. I had this feeling like, you know, he's going like, to do something, you know, like I was just like, nee, 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 a little spidey sense. Like, <laughs> this came up. Makes sense. dude, <laughs> walked right back up the stairs. Sure enough, guy's got his uh, trunk open. He, he had a tire iron. Oh my God. And he was like this, like full, like swing. I was like, hey, he like yelled at him. He's like, ah. And then he's just like, ah, and then he starts slamming it. And then yeah. I start running like full speed, like, nee, 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 nee. like I was straight up like the T1000, dude, like full sprint, <laughs> like at this guy. Wait, he was hitting your car? Yeah, he hit it. Bam. He hits my, um, uh, the taillight, the back. And then he went to go hit. He didn't break it because he's a little pussy. So, um, <laughs> you, you don't know, even he, hit right. Yeah, he didn't break it. Come on, guy. You know, you go to the gym. And um, so I'm running after this guy, and and then he just, oh, shit. He's realized I'm getting close. <laughs> he jumps in his car, and then him and his buddy, like, 
you know, skirt off and, and are like, and so I'm like running <laughs> cause I'm young, dude, I'm running after him in the parking lot all the way down <laughs> through the exit. And they're in the car. <laughs> and they're in the car and they're like, oh, I'm gonna oh. fucking get you. you know? <laughs> like, what was that? What am I going to do if I actually did catch up to him? You know, <laughs> up front. I didn't even think about that. You're all tired. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> okay. Just, I'm really going to kick your ass, but hold on a second. Yeah, give me 10 minutes. Did I, did I tell you guys I used a schoolyard, uh, like, uh, was it like insult the other day when someone cut me off? By the way, super effective as an adult. Like butthead or something like that? No, was no, no, no. Like, you know, when you're a kid, and like, you, you know, what are they like? You're ugly. You have yeah. a big nose or whatever. Oh, yeah. uh, like that. I did that, dude. <laughs> yeah. And and I conf not only did it confuse. Those still work. I, I, not only, did, well, when an adult says that to you. Oh, it hurts even worse. Oh, dude, because this guy, not only did he cut me off, then he hits his brakes. Your mother hates you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason nobody why really you, loves you. Yeah. You're the reason why your parents got yeah. a divorce. You're the reason why your dad never came back from getting milk one night. You know? He he, he cut me off. How like, great would it be if you like hit that one? You know what I'm saying? Oh man! Well, so <laughs> so I mean, well, the so, divorce one. There's like a 50 50 shot. You know what I'm well, no. So I did because yeah. I was I wasn't really upset. I was partially upset, but partially like <laughs> I'm gonna say something funny. And the dude did have a big nose, so oh. he pulls up next to me like, like fuck you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like. You got a big ass nose, bro. The look on his face and hurt his face. Take that horse face. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell. I can tell. I actually hurt his yeah, feelings. Yeah, childhood in yeah. insecurity. He was like, "Damn, bro!" Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, He's gonna go the rest yeah, of his yeah. day just like Ugh. that's what you get. Bro. It's all coming back. Yeah. Ah. That is. He got move. it from the journeyman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the journeyman. Oh man. Oh, yeah. Check this out. You're not what you eat. You're what you digest. If you can't break down the food, you can forget about all those protein, carbs, and fats. You can forget about feeding your muscles and uh, getting healthier. Now, as you get older, you start producing less and less digestive enzymes. So this is really important, especially for those who eat a high-protein diet, right? Because a protein is a chain of amino acids. You got to break down the protein into those amino acids to be able to use it. Well, anyway, there's a company we work with called Masszymes, and they make digestive enzymes Specific, specifically designed for people like us, fitness-oriented people. So you take these digestive enzymes, then you eat your meal, you break down more of those proteins, those fats, those carbs, you help things like bloating, constipation, you absorb more nutrients. It just makes your food more effective and they're very inexpensive. Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mindpump10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from RW Marshall 27. Is there a specific benefit to good mornings versus Romanian deadlifts? Okay, this is a good question because when you look at the the action of the movement, they look very similar at the hips, right? At yeah. the hips, they're pretty much identical. Just loaded different for sure. Yeah, they're loaded different. And um good mornings, the bar is on your back. Obviously, Romanian deadlifts, you're holding onto the bar and it's in front of you. Good mornings puts more emphasis on maintaining uh, thoracic stability. Like you have to really, thoracic being that kind of upper mid back area, you have to really keep that tight and strong and in, a, in, in that squeeze back position as you do, as you bend over and get the stretch. With a Romanian deadlift, you don't have to necessarily focus so much on that. You just focus on the hips. So Romanian deadlifts are actually easier to teach. Yeah. Then good mornings. Good mornings good. require a lot more skill for sure for that reason. Yes. The risk goes up a bit. Totally. You can. What's also great about the good mornings is you can load them more. You definitely can load them Because normally more. one of the, the parts that, I mean, when you do Romanians, you're not touching, right? So you get to a point where you get to, where your arms and your hands are fatigued yep, yep. from holding that kind of weight. So when you really want to load, good mornings um, offer you the ability to be able to do that. So that's what I like using. Now, I didn't do good mornings until I was in my, I would say, mid-20s. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do them because I didn't know they existed. That wasn't an exercise anybody did for the longest time. And I went and started, this is when I started learning about- If like, someone saw you doing them in the gym, oh, still to this day, they, they would, would think, freak out. Yeah, Correct. they still would think you're doing a, an exercise. Or you hurt your back. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I was going through old, uh, like old timey muscle building books and stuff like that. And good mornings were such a staple exercise in the way that people trained that they actually used to boast about how much they could do a good morning with. It was like one of those exercises that you'd be like, I could, good morning, I could do 400 pounds with a good morning or whatever. And I actually got to the point where I did, I was able to do a single with uh, 365. 
uh, in a good morning. It made my squat and deadlift really strong, especially my squat because it really taught me to keep that kind of upper back position. But I rarely did them with clients because the control required for a good good morning, it, it, you tend to want to round your lower back even more with a good morning because you're so focused on holding the bar. They're, they back. are definitely, though, different enough to include both of them. Yes. You know, so. I wouldn't do them the same workout, though, right? No, 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 no. They're, and they're close enough that I wouldn't do them in the same workout, right. but they're different enough that I would, you know, cycle them in. The same way that I treat front squats and back squats. Mm. You know, I'll go on phases where I'm focused more heavily on back squats than another phase where I'll be more focused on front squats because um, they are similar enough that I wouldn't do back squats and front squats in the same workout, mm -hmm. but enough to where I would definitely incorporate. They both have enough value to and stand alone by themselves that you should incorporate both. Did you do, did you, have you guys ever done them like a, like for a lengthened period of time as part of your workout? Yeah. 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 Good morning's not as much. I mean, Romanians for sure, but yeah, I mean, I got into them kind of late, uh, but once I figured it out and like the good technique with it, man, it was like, like you said, you could load quite substantially more and, and I got a lot more benefit I thought from the good mornings. Yeah. Now one of the keys too is when you're holding the bar, it does need to be in a lower position than a lot of people squat. Mm -hmm. Like if you do a high bar squat, you probably don't want to do a Romanian deadlift with it. You don't want to do it. Yeah. High on your neck. With that kind it, of leverage. It's got to be behind your like shoulder blades. Yeah. Otherwise <laughs> it sucks. I think that's why it benefited my squat so much was because yeah. I'm already kind of a low bar and I, my chest already comes forward. Yep. I have a long torso. And so uh, it's the first half of the good morning is similar to the mechanics of my squat. And so getting really strong at that, um, carried over to my squat. It's funny. I was, it just reminds me, I was teaching those to Courtney and she always would call them morning glories. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> geez. no, good morning. Okay, That's why. different, honey. <laughs> yeah, it's a different thing. <laughs> why, I can yeah. show you that too. Depends <laughs> how you were spotting her. And high noons. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Jada Rankin. I used to get pretty sore the day after a workout, but now I hardly feel anything. I am practicing progressive overload and I think my strength is going up. Am I not pushing myself enough? You answered your question already by that second part. Yeah. The fact that your strength is going up. I mean, you're in a yeah. great place. If your strength is going up and you're not getting sore, you you hit the holy grail of like the perfect amount of progressive overload. You know, you're soreness overloading the body just enough mm -hmm. yeah. that you are getting stronger and you're not getting too sore. That's a beautiful sweet spot. You know what soreness will tell you if it tells you anything? It can tell you, you did too much. Yeah. It doesn't tell you. It's how to more often than not, it is an indicator of that. Yeah. More times than not, your soreness is is you telling your do you, your body telling you that you didn't need to do that yeah. much to progressively overload. Yeah. And if you are progressively overloading and you know you are and you're seeing strength go up, you don't need to change anything. Now, now and, and here's also uh, another part of that. My best progress, my bet, when I know like I'm doing everything right, besides the measurables like strength and all that stuff, is I don't get sore. When I'm doing everything right, mm -hmm. my workouts don't make me that's sore. That's my point of why yeah. this person, you shouldn't. You hit the, the, the sweetest yeah. of all sweet spots right now. I mean, that's hard to do, but if, if you see strength going well, up, and you're not getting sore. You're in such a beautiful yeah. place. You got to break all these associations uh, with what you're trying to get out of your workouts, which is a hard thing to do when you're tied to being sore, to sweating like profusely after you're done, you know, as sort of the, if I, if I did an up. effective workout, right? Like what constitutes an effective workout? Um, Results. Reevaluate that. Yeah. If you're getting stronger, that's a big uh, fundamental thing that you should just stay in that kind of ranges. Am I getting stronger? Are things, you know, moving it closer towards my goal or, you know, am I just uh, getting this like soreness after this, this crazy work? Yeah. Here's it's, it's such a, you know, this is one of the worst myths because I think that this is responsible for this whole like idea that soreness means you had a good workout. It's more, res it's, it's responsible for really preventing fitness fanatics from progressing. Because it's the fitness fanatics that tend to chase this because they yeah. think that it's about. I did this as a kid. My goal with every workout was I had, to, I had to get sore. If I didn't get sore, oh, man, that was a wasted workout. And so I would always do things to try and get myself sore. And it very quickly would result in me getting no progress. Mm -hmm. And I wish I knew this as a kid. I wish somebody taught me this because I would have saved myself a lot of wasted workouts, a lot of overtraining. I would have got way better results. Ideally, ideally, this is what I tell people. You should either feel no soreness or the kind of soreness you have to search for to feel where yeah. you're like, 
stretching. You're like, oh, yeah, I think I, yeah, I can kind of feel it. Mm -hmm. Not the kind of soreness where you're like, oh, man, like I touch it and it's just like super sore or it lasts for two days. It means you did too much. Next question is from 35 Sabrina. Is unilateral training for a period of time an ideal way to fix any aches that come from lifting? Potentially. It's, yeah, I, I don't know if it would be the ideal way, but it's generally It'll speaking. highlight it, yeah. I was going to say, generally speaking, it's an excellent way to alleviate, to, to correct imbalances and fix issues that may be causing you pain. Now, the reason why I say general is because if you're the average person, and you don't know how to do like a self-assessment and you don't have, let's say, the funds to hire a professional who can really you know, identify what's going on. This is an, a relatively easy way where probably 75% of the time you'll be able to solve your problem, which is a big, that's, that's, that's a big number where my knee hurts, my hip hurts, my shoulder hurts. Let me train unilaterally. By, by the way, we're going to get more in depth with this because it's not just training unilaterally. You also have to train unilaterally in a way to where you're, you have mirror form on either side. That's the key. Like right arm looks exactly like left arm. So you have to watch yourself in the mirror uh, when you're doing this. But this will highlight issues because especially when you're doing bilateral stuff and especially with a barbell or a machine. Yeah. It'll it's, mask a lot of dude, uh, compensations that are occurring. You, you don't even know. You, yeah. you won't even notice that you're pushing more with one side or one side is uh, compensating for the other until you go one arm at a time or one leg at a time. And then it really highlights those issues for you, balances you out, makes you feel, you know. A well, I think better. that's the most important part of the unilateral training. It doesn't do much for you if you just keep going through the motions. The idea when you do the unilateral training is you're really comparing your left to your right. Mm -hmm. and, and it will tell you a lot. If you, for example, let's say you've been deadlifting forever and you're your left hip is always hurting like crazy. You can't figure out why because when you watch your videos of your deadlift, that doesn't look like there's anything really wrong that you can see with your eye. And then you go and you do single leg deadlifts and one side, you have all the balance and stability. You can toe touch all day long. Mm -hmm. The other side, you're, you're all falling over all place. over the place and rotating out of control. Yeah, your form breaks down to it. It's like, oh, you obviously have an issue with stability, strength, and control on one side versus the other. Now you go put the work in at, you know, you do the 90-90s, you do the stability work, you do the strength work, you go good deep range, good full range of motion work, and then now you try and catch that left side up to the right side and then go back. If you just do unilateral, there's nothing magical about unilateral training that also fixes those aches or pains. It's, it's to help you get closer to identifying where the breakdown is in your body so you can go then go do the work. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't have to be like, you know, as complicated as like, oh, there's an imbalance in this joint and abduction here and it's literally like wow my my right knee goes in this way my left knee yeah. goes that way my left knee my left left side feels stronger let me copy that with my right so you don't even have to know much for this to can be I, can i just control my body and have yeah. it do what i want it to do right yeah, like as simple as that like you don't have to overcomplicate it, um, but you do have to notice like where it's bringing you out of balance, like well, where things are kind of pulling you left, right, rotationally, yep. uh, and, and be very cognizant of what's happening and slow way down and use less weight. Listen, this is why we created like a, a program like Prime Pro. This would complement. So, okay, so map symmetry, we have the unilateral work in there. Ideally, you have Prime Pro also to complement these types of things, too. It doesn't mean that you have to have it. You can go do all the research and figure it out yourself or try and figure out what does this mean. But if you were to do unilateral work and see a discrepancy in one side, let's say, like I was talking about the stability on the left side, you would do all the work in the MAPS Prime Pro on the hips. You do those exercises that we recommend in there, that's going to benefit that and then work on getting stronger. So do those exercises, work on getting stronger on each side, watch watch them count, catch up and balance out. Yeah, like, and one thing idea. to add here is that there's this belief that joint pain comes from uh, like, oh, it's it's uh, overuse. You'll hear that a lot, like, oh, it's overuse Weakness. or, yeah. But the way that your joints, uh, the, the way that we evolve, the way that our joints work is if they work the way that they're supposed to, you will be pain free and they will move very well. Um, besides in acute injury, meaning you fall down, you bump yourself, you hit yourself, besides that, right? This kind of chronic pain that you develop, it's because the joint is moving in a way that is suboptimal. And what happens over time is that suboptimal movement 
starts to wear the joint in ways that is not supposed to be worn. And then this is when you start to develop issues. So it's like, you know, I've used this example before. It's like a, a sliding door on a track. If it's perfectly balanced on the track and lubed, it's going to slide back and forth, no problem. If it's off just a little bit, it'll start to wear one side of the track. And you might not notice one or two times, but over, you know, a month or whatever, oh man, the track isn't looking good. It looks all chewed up. We got to replace the track. So why am I saying this? Because if you have chronic pain, there's a root cause to that chronic pain. And if you fix that, you tend to fix the pain and, and versus going to get surgery or looking at the joint and saying, oh, I have a, something's wrong with my knee. No, right. no, it's not your knee. It's your movement. Something's wrong with your movement. Next question is from CMOS23. What is the best way to capitalize on a big day of eating? Lift the same day prior to the meal or the next morning after the meal? Good question. <laughs> like, how do you guys like to, uh, like, I like this because you'll hmm. have those holidays and those days where you are going to eat a lot of calories. Do you guys ever try to like utilize it? And like, so, oh it okay, so it depends what I want out of this, right? Yeah. So if I'm looking for performance in the workout, it makes sense to load up and then this is for the workout tomorrow morning or whatever. Yeah. If I'm like, I want to mm -hmm. minimize the amount of, quote unquote damage all these extra calories would do i'd actually want to do a hard lift before so that a majority of those calories get prioritized to recovery and building muscle yeah so uh, neither one is wrong yeah i think it's just kind of where my mindset is at if i'm like oh i'm really trying to get after and, these and to be clear this is splitting hair it's like I mean, you, you, you're right you're right that's why i meant both neither one of these are wrong thing, I, I would say yeah it's just like what like if i now if i'm like in the kick of like oh i want to get stronger on my deadlift i want to i want to see if i can you know hit this pr i'm gonna definitely you know save the, all those those calories being loaded up and, and train the next day. But if I'm more like aesthetically driven where I'm like, again, don't want to do a bunch of damage by putting on body fat, I'm going to train hard first and then I'm going to go eat like, a, you know, a king. Yeah. I mean, I, I prefer the, the option where I, you know, eat and then train the next day yep. for sure. That's just the most fun uh, way to do it, I guess. Well, it makes more sense because none of us are really performance driven right now. Yeah. yeah. If one of us was in a sport, or something like that, or really chasing a, a deadlift record or something like that, you would probably- Well, no, that's what he said. He likes to do it after mm -hmm. for the strength. He likes to eat the big meal and then the day after yeah. use that as use fuel. Use that. Oh, fast eat, oh yeah, eating, yeah. you're saying you're saying eating afterwards. Eating. No, no, no. No, no. Eat before and then train the same oh, day. Oh. Yeah. 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 That that is for performance. That's how yeah. I do it. Yeah. yeah. That's how I always do it. In fact, I designed a I wanted to design. I started a Oh, family. that's interesting. That's where we're all di we're different then. Yeah. I definitely would I would re rarely yeah. ever do it that way. Well, because too, oh. like we do better when, when we're in a fast. I think it's yeah. like a focus thing because mm -hmm. I do a better lifts, like heavier lifts, uh, yeah. when I'm like that. But no. When I when I I've done this for so after Thanksgiving is what I do Thanksgiving we eat a lot the next day I like to come in here and try and and, and work out work out with my cousins and it's like a three hour slow workout but I like to see how much I can lift so that's the way I use a big meal is I I the next workout I'm like let's I like the pumps I like the strength. Um, but there's really no, I mean, we're kind of, sp we're splitting hairs with this. Yeah. We are, but it's a fun conversation it because I think it really d depends on your, it just, I mean, look at how we're split here because. I care more about the look and what it made the extra calories are going to do to me body fat yeah. wise. Uh -huh. And so I could give a shit about how, if I'm hella weak in the workout or not yeah, in yeah, the yeah. workout, like I care more about the aesthetic side. So I'm going to, I'm going to train hard first, then e eat big yeah. afterwards. And if you want performance, if you cared more about your workout, then you would do it the way you guys are doing. Yeah. Now yeah. the way to do this isn't necessarily to be like, to, to think that this is going to, you know, quote unquote fix the big meal one no, way or another. No. It really is about like, oh, I'm enjoying myself. It's a great holiday. We're having fun. And man, I ate a lot of calories. You know, tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to go and see how strong I can get or whatever. I'm going to have some fun with this type of deal. So I don't, I want to be careful. And that's why I kept saying splitting hairs is because what I don't want to convey to people is that there's a way to erase or somehow fix the, no. you know, oh, yeah, the, the no. bad meal. Like, you know, I heard if you are not making up for it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, the, the, the difference on both of it would be so, so minimal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's literally a, more of a per personal preference, I think, than totally. anything else. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. 
Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.